Hey guys, it's KG Master here, and welcome to a special video. Now, in fact, the reason why I made this video besides the other ones that I was meant to make is the fact that this one was meant to be quicker. But it took a lot more time. Like, a lot more time. It took, like, weeks. Yay, in fact. Four weeks ago, in some of the news and some of the uh, facts that I'm pointing out in this video that you'll be watching, maybe meaningless now or maybe have changed by the or maybe by the time you're like i don't know by the time it's year 2077 and don't know why you're still watching this and content and you're just commenting oh this is old news even though you even though i don't pay attention to the dates which is how most people are like now anyway off topic and what i was going to about to say is I'm also going to warn you guys that I can, I'm going to be swearing a lot in this video than I usually do. I get into a little bit of political here and there. In fact, some of the things I say I do get a little bit all over the place. I go in circles a bit. This, this video was not scripted whatsoever, so I'm a little bit of a mess here and there with the video. But uh, most of the things I said are true facts. And so most of the things I said are really good and interesting that you might listen or might not listen to. And I'll put segments on part of the videos that you might just want to listen or you don't want to listen to that will be in the link of the description or in the comment section if anyone gets offended or offensive or anything i just want to let you know that i'm not attacking people and, and i will be mentioning this quite a lot in this video so yeah um i don't know if there's anything else besides uh, me swearing that I don't really s normally swear in these particular videos. In fact, I have been working on some movies that I will be swearing. That's a different story, and yeah, I'm getting all over the place again because it's not scripted. I'm going off topic, and yeah. I hope you guys like this video for what it is and for what it and not and not for what it isn't. And please, really, please do not take this out of context because that's mostly how i get things really when i'm trying to make a statement about this or that or what but uh if you really am just want to really go to a particular point of a video that you're just keen of listening through my perspective or you just want to listen to for regardless or you just want to watch the entire video and you find this meaningless that's entirely up to you uh, go to the link as I said before and you can just get to whatever you want. I will definitely put every time bit here of which maybe a few gaps. Maybe I won't. Maybe I will. Who knows? Maybe if I feel if I'm t not tired enough to do it. Anyway, and some pieces here I had to shorten. Some pieces that I had to re-say or some pieces that I completely missed. And I probably, most of the time, that is the case with not just me, but other people moving back to the, moving to this video. And now I just made this entire video more longer. Now, this is the, uh, the third time I was working on this video that you're watching because for some freaking reason, I recorded everything i recorded the beginning of this video and i'm redoing it now because you'll most of the time you'll see me wearing blue and you'll be sometimes seeing me wearing gray because the where i'm wearing blue is that talking about the things that i had in the video for some reason is gone because <sighs> right the start of this entire video i filmed and i filmed most of the other Bits and video. I don't know why the fuck did it not appear because I distinctly remember and I know that I'm recorded it and it's just it, for some reason it's not there it's not on on my phone it's not on my computer I don't know why and it's like it never existed so yeah I'm pretty pissed off about it and 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 I started drinking ginger beer to cool down and come back to this video I gotta say I'm progressing a lot with what I'm saying and it really helps including reading books and stuff like that um, yeah so this is me from the future and you'll see me wearing gray from the past because 
I was talking stuff about the past and you'll mostly see me wearing blue in the future because most of the fifth fucking video that I had for some reason is gone. Don't know why, because I recorded it all and it pains me that I have to re-say all this shit because it was unscripted. In this video, I will be discussing the great legendary Joel Schumacher. I hope, sorry for pronouncing his name, lost him wrong. He passed away in 2020 this year. Um, yeah, I'll be discussing about a little bit about him. I'll also be discussing uh, about Funko and some of their merchandise and I will be discussing about character options and Doctor Who and their, also their merchandise and some tips here for character options. Tips are mostly do with the sonic screwdrivers and yeah. Now I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoy this video and we'll continue. We're going to be discussing about Joel Schumacher here. The legendary director of Lost Boys and so he passed away. Now here's the thing, and people only know him, the director of the, the two other Batman films. This is what I said on Facebook. I don't think he should be known as what people don't like and blame him as a director on the other Batman films. But give this man respect for being a director and work on these films that had no choice but to be more for kids. Even though Batman were not aimed for children in the first place, Blame the toys, the advertisement, that was aimed for kids. This person tried to bring back the Tim Burton's Batman and the Adam West style of Batman. Now, what I'm saying as the Adam West style of Batman is the fact that uh, back in the late 60s, I think, 50s, I'm not too sure, the TV show, I think Adam West, the actor, plays as the Batman. This was more, this show of, in style of Batman was more kid friendly and was more campy and it had a lot of puns and jokes and all that kind of dubious stuff. Now, Tim Burton's style of Batman was going for the more darker and it led on to what the Batman we, we mostly know of. Um, yeah, so his, his, so Joel Schumacher, two other films, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, I think he was trying to do the style of Adam West and bits of Tim Burton's style of his, of the Batman series. I think that's what he was kind of going for. And I even mentioned, to a point he was forced to make it toyetic. I'll talk to you about the word and me and why it was toyetic. He even went out to say sorry, and over-attached fans still shit on him, and shit on his other films, and now he's been claimed as the worst director, and even got a, a um, reward for it which I think is absolutely pathetic and kind of useless and you have like a director that makes good movies and other people see them as bad or good people might not like the, his films and he might like other films but claiming people and claiming this director as a bad director because he did these two films that mostly people hated doesn't mean that he should get an Oscar for being the worst director. It makes absolute like he got a. It makes no fucking sense whatsoever. I don't know why that's a thing, was a thing, and I don't know if it still is. Back to what I was saying and where I written down. So he made it toyetic. He even went out to say sorry, and over attached fans still shit on him, and some of the fan base for his and his Batman and films they're discarded for being the worst films ever made. Now I don't. I'm not saying it's true or not. There is a fan base for. Uh, Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Fans and, you know, a fan base of his films like Lost Boys and, you know, some people shit on those films as well, so, you know. But they're really good films, and I think what he did with Batman Forever and all the Batman films, I think his his intentions were good. Some are a bit unexplained, and some, but really the ones who stopped Tim Burton and, and got Joel Schumacher and forced him to make the Batman films more friendly, not saying bad or good, but something he truly deserved better, but was kind enough to do him anyway. He has done so many fantastic films. Rest in peace, Joel Schumacher. I'm done with that and I don't know what else to say. Hey guys, I just want to recap a few things in here. What I said before about Joel Schumacher was forced to make these movies to be more kid friendly. Actually, I was quite, I was wrong about that statement because after re-watching the interview, um, please check it out because it has more information than what I'm going to be saying. But the company, I think it was WB or something. I can't remember. Sorry if I, pronounce, I say the wrong term of the company, but they 
wanted him. Joel Schumacher had a choice of making these films, so he went out to make these films, but he had no choice but to make these more kid-friendly and later on to be more toyetic in the second movie. And I mentioned this before as kid-friendly, as in going back to the era of the comics and with the puns and the jokes in with the Adam West 40s and the 60s Adam West's Batman TV show. And here's the thing, I did forgot to mention that it's a good movie and a bad movie. At the same time, um, people that love this movie, not just because of this or that or that, but some people understand and some people knew the different direction it was going for. This movie does have potential, just like the other movie. They both have good, they have extremely good moments. So it's not Joel Schumacher's fault. It's the fact that he, if, if he wanted to make these movies more serious in tone, he would have done, but he couldn't because of the, the, the studio and the production want these movies to be more kid-friendly to appeal the backlash that came from um, Tim Burton's movie. Even though, unfortunately, they, they weren't even aimed for freaking children. It was the advertisement and comic books were aimed as, even though the, but even Tim Burton said this movie was going to be more darker as not unless the comic books. And, and it's, in Tim Burton's movies, uh, including his bat, his version of Batman and the, and the darkness of this and that his style is pretty much the same Batman we know today and but not like the classic Adam West Batman and these Batman that in this Batman and Batman and Robin and Batman Forever the first movie was more the first one was more they were making it more like a movie the second one it was more like a toy commercial but that's the thing now the people that love this movie is because of its uh, campiness not just that but the actors some of the script, uh, some of the punny, uh, the fun, the funniness of it all, and and the, and so on. I, there's other things out there that people love about this movie, and it's not just that. The people that hate it though, the sexual um, tension, Joel Schumacher, that was his ideas and intentions, and he he was more like an artist in a way. He was seeing these movies, and he saw the reason. There is I don't know the re the real reason behind the sexual tension, and I think it it, it I think it, it works in. With poison ivy anyway and the puns and that work really well for this type of genre movie people don't like it because it's because it has puns in this but it works really well here with like in the set up like adam west batman movie even but guess what it works really well in this script in this movie it won't work well with other movies because they're serious and tiny it works here because it is what it's meant to be now, over the top just a fun movie really and and here's an, the other reason why the people the fans fans didn't like it was the fact with the costume with the fat nipples and you know something like that director the director mentioned that the reason they didn't they didn't have a lot of time making this film so they had to really quickly make the costumes and that they didn't make it but they had to contact a costume department that makes costumes and they asked this and that and Joel Schumacher looked at the comics, the original, some of the original comics. He looked out, looked at the shape and the way they looked and stuff. He saw the costumes as depicted in the comics in a way, and he saw them as Roman, Greek, perfect body shaped statues in a way. Unfortunately, uh, there were some of the costume department was making jokes about this and that. There were hidden jokes throughout the costume, especially um, in between the private bits and the bat nipples now that wasn't he misinterprets what the nipples represent in movie form he because and what would cause problems with uh yeah stuff like that so just watch the interview describing a little bit more better than what i'm saying because i'm really saying some of the stuff in the in the uh in the video by mind and script uh, this, is, this video is not scripted whatsoever so yeah but i'm doing all right for the meantime so yeah, you got a degree of diehard fans that like that are Probably best known for and only known and only like the Batman is serious and there's Batman and there's Batman fans that also like this but also like the serious stuff so there's a bit of mix really and it's just me in the middle that kind of likes both of the sides now and there was and there was people complaining about the cast members and stuff like that which is a typical thing with any movie that's been made with cast members with the cast and that everyone got really along with each other everyone was great they had a fun time some of the actors the way that the characters were portrayed in this movie fit so perfectly well for what the director was going for. Yes, it might not fit for the demographic of what Tim Burton's movies or later other movies, but again, this was going for the old classic comedic, but some of it is a bit serious. In fact, this movie is a mix of being serious. 
Other things that people complained was the bat credit card. Yes, <laughs> in it, it was just a funny, stupid gag for the movie. That's it. You know, it had no plot, device, or purpose besides buying. Also, it's a funny tie-in joke to do with Adam West Batman with all the gadgets that are completely, sometimes they're useless and sometimes it's just ridiculous, but hey, it works for the uh, tone of the film. And people were complaining about Bane, you know, the, the Bane in this movie, because in this movie, this depiction of Bane, he's more of like a servant, more like a slave, but he's like an overgrown big, you know, he would basically fight anyone. And he's really massive and he's really strong, in fact. But he's not stupid. I didn't see this, ver I didn't see this version of Bane wasn't that bad, in fact. Yes, it was completely a different version of Bane, probably not the Bane that people grow up on the comics, but people are comparing him with the Bane in the Christopher Nolan films. These are these two Banes are completely, fully different. Different story backgrounds, um, different abilities. In fact, I love the new Bane. I love this Bane because it, I love like here's the thing. I'm a fan of Batman. Yes, of course. But I'm a fan of all the things, and I'm a fan of every batman thing that's ever been ever ever made in fact i'm not just a fan of one type of version of the same villain i'm a fan of every version of the villain of in each take of the villain like i like every version of the mad hatter every version of the joker every version of this every version of that you know going out throughout movies tv shows and that and the story of bane in batman and robin Unigen stuff, I don't know what you call it. It's called Venom, really. I'm gonna describe it. It's basically just ex he, was, he was an experimental weapon. And unlike Bane in the Christopher Nolan movie, yes, he's sort of like a, a version of a weapon in a way, but his story, he's not, he had, was, it was no, he was never, he wasn't an experimental lab rat that became a, a soldier. Forically speaking, he is a soldier in a way. But he has a different story, and he's not like the other Bane. Nowhere near like the other Bane. I don't know why people can complain about this version of Bane and prefer the other Bane is better. Yes, I agree, the other version of Bane is better. But why you're saying that this... Bane, ugh, anyway, moving on from that discussion about Bane. Everyone, also, other people were complaining about the physics and the gravity that does not apply in this movie compared to the other movies yes the physics are off the walls a bit here but most of it is pretty well tamed um yeah i guess the, some of the physics don't make any sense but guess what it's a movie you expect things to be more like real life and and i'm pretty sure christopher nolan's movie covers that because he was trying to go for a more real approach and more a very good approach in fact but this version and depiction of the batman movie is not meant to be it was just meant to be a fun over the top doesn't have to be a serious film even i mean the actor that plays as batman he was had a good time in fact the only problem he felt uncomfortable was the suit and for those reasons that i mentioned before because I had time to redo the costumes and stuff like that and didn't have time to do this either I don't know all the facts because I'm going outside. The I'm going outside what was said in the interview. Now, people had a problem with this with this as Bruce Wayne. I think it was great as Bruce Wayne. People were complaining as Batman because the, here's the thing: most of the diehard fans are sticking around and seeing this as the other films and complaining about his Batman because all the other Batmans like. Uh, Tim Burton's Batman and Christopher Nolan's Batman and so on they have a deep voice like I'm Batman because they have deeper voices so no one will know their true identity of their voice that's the thing that, that Tim Burton kind of fixed really and um not fixed but like uh shared that a better like an interesting approach for Batman now it wasn't like that with uh Adam West's Batman and because uh because the TV show because they didn't thought about that and it was they didn't thought about uh the uh style of the voice a bit like imagine like especially with like superman well you know what i mean 
Now, because, you know, Adam West was like a TV show and it was campy and fun and cheeky. Sort of like, sort of like, um, because that's what, uh, they're trying to bring back with this movie. In fact, they were trying to bring back this, the same kind of voice thing. That's why, um, Batman doesn't sound like the other Batman, like that he doesn't sound, or has a different voice. He's just like, I'm Batman, <laughs> instead of, um, uh, going like, I'm Batman. But it's really funny, and nonetheless... Especially when he says it to Mr. Freeze, he's just going like, seriously. <laughs> See, the thing is, we always had uh, Batman always depressed and serious about this and that. He always, you know, always kept rethinking about his parents, trying to find his killer and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's been happening. It's been it's been a trope since the some of the cartoons and the movie and Tim Burton and, and they did it and, and it happened again with the Christopher Nolan and it happened again with the TV show you know it's been it's, it's like we got like six so we got six Bruce Wayne uh six um Batmans that are avenging their parents and stuff like that and this they just want to get rid of that kind of the exact same kind of subplot later on yes even though there's still a little bit of depression in him with other things like memories or the thing that's been going on with Alfred, but those are very, over time he, uh, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It's basically, you know, he's, he's grown up a bit and he's more, uh, a bit of charm in him that, you know, he's calm about things. In some cases, he, you know, some bits here and there he's calm, some bits here and there are not because they're, there's, uh, sequences and Things that he, you know, that are very serious, a little bit of serious in the fact, um, sort of just look on the bright side of life. You know, you're more positive, you know, he's exactly what he, Batman in this movie is. He's more positive than, uh, I don't know how to describe it really. It's more, it's more like that really. Now this movie, I'm, I'm telling you all this stuff, not just because to change your mind about it or just because you don't like this film or if you do, no, it was just really more of an example in a, sort of dissecting the film in a way and it's not really that terrible to a degree yes the movie is a bit off yeah and the problems during production and if uh, tim button was still directing i think you know there would be a lot of other good uh films and sequels and if joel schumacher was given the option to take the movie seriously as well i think he would have been good at making good movies of batman or anything else really but unfortunately dude if, if uh, without Joel Schumacher's Batman, we wouldn't get really good other Batman films, the Dark Knight trilogy, and so on. A lot, there's a moment here where a lot of people miss the fact that his Batman, where where they where he, where um, gets out of hand with Robin, and he gets into a fight, and he chugs him overboard this this goop substance, and there's a subtle detail that you'll see like Batman at a glim and a glimpse moment where. You can see him looking down, and he's probably, and you can, he's a bit like, I don't know, it's like, he remembered, uh, Jack, the play, the, the person that becomes later on as the Joker, so he, sort of, sort of like a, I wouldn't say, like a reflection of, like, what happens to Jack, led on to, you know, if, if Robin was still carrying on like this, this, it would have ended up worse. And you know, if you, if you think about it a little bit more. So that was the kind of little subtle detail that showed that like it's on like 10 seconds, but you know, he got over it because that's, you know, it's in the top. So then he's moving on from that. And yes, these movies are sort of like a reboot because they recast Batman in a way, but it's, they're, they're kind of going for the sequel, but they're not trying to make it as serious. It's sort of like people loved it and people didn't love it. The fact that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger played as Mr. Freeze now, Here's the thing, the director, I wouldn't, even, even I wouldn't, at the time, wouldn't see another de depiction of Mr. Freeze than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, again, people took this seriously and they didn't like that Arnold Schwarzenegger was playing as Mr. Freeze. Now, he had a great time, he had fun playing the character. You know, I, the thing is, here's the major thing, I don't know if this is true or not, but when he was in the costume, and he was doing his role and trying to be, you know, he's being overly funny expression over the top and that stuff like that. But he stick to the character that was meant to be in the script. And here's the thing, 
Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I don't know if this is true or not, but he had a health problem or something really major and he had to go to the doctors and stuff like that. And they, and I think that's why, one of the reasons why they had a double, uh, a stunt double slash another uh, actor to replace um, his role for the meantime during bits and here. And there's another reason why uh, the actors didn't, won't get to see or talk to Arnold is because of the press and they didn't want these characters to all together in some areas because they would have, it would have been on news and would have spoiled everything because during that era the press was really into you know all this stuff and they really want to spoil or get into the details of movies especially they there was an incident that that they found out that some guy had a secret little camera that was you know filming everything behind the movie and stuff like that and he wasn't meant to because it was you know it was like a secret little detective or something i don't know so yeah people were complaining mr freeze uh some people were complaining the actor and some people didn't like that arnold schwarzenegger played as mr freeze yes i understand at both directions i think because mr F a lot of actors could have played as mr freeze but the director wanted him because of his uh roles as of those other great char uh, characters like the Terminator, uh, Predator, all these. But it, guess the thing, that's the thing. The problem is that people, Arnold wasn't trying to be one of those characters, all those characters that he's done in the past. He was playing someone different. In fact, I want to get into the character and of Mr. Freeze here now. He's not just a villain, he's a sympathetic villain and he was trying to, trying to cure his wife. There's plot, there's pieces here that the, some of the diehard fans of Batman complain that why uh, Mr. Freeze didn't kill him straight away. Now here's the here's the reason why is that yeah he's he's cold hearted because of cold character in the fact that uh, in terms of behavior because he, he didn't really care anything besides trying to protect her and trying to save her wife doesn't mean that he doesn't care about anyone but just he's really on his mind at the moment is you know saving her wife even though he does have little fun pieces here and there but really his main goal is to save a wife from and trying to find a formula and stuff like that and there is really subtle bits here that didn't kill batman at this bit even though it, it could also be a uh a way of making a kid friendly and you know the, you know it's not part of the script or whatever of him killing Batman you know well, you know you could think of it as a it's a simple little plot point of making the movie longer and if he did kill Batman here it would movie would have been simple yeah that's that would be the case but the thing is here uh, Mr. Free and he doesn't really he doesn't kill Batman because he's not after to, to kill Batman he's after you know his goal his primal mission his big mission to you know save his wife or was it a disease or a flu or something? I can't remember. So yeah, that's the reason why, you know, he's like, I'll kill you next time. But that was in the way of saying, uh, don't come across me again or I will kill you finally because you're in my way. So yeah, it was sort of a warning. You know, it could be taken in any context, but there's just really subtle bits here in the movie. In fact, I don't care if you hate the movie or you like the movie. I'm just pointing here in examples and just a little bit of here about the truth of that this movie is not see the thing is now i just want to get to this movie is not that all bad you know there is points here and there that, that people diehard fans of batman can take at is or take the piss or um shit on but really there's a really extremely good pieces in here there's really good bits in here in fact, if you like fan edit this, take some pieces out that you don't really like and it doesn't fit, you know, this would have been a great, you, you, you're depicted as a good movie. You, and there's another um, people that complain about is the whole of the set designs and that, but it's really, I love the set designs. I love that the music is a bit underrated. The set designs are an explosion of colors, um, complete comic reflection and a masterpiece in a way I could say. Because it is so beautiful looking, you know, you see all these details in here. And yes, it's not like Gotham and Tim Burton's 
movie. It is a kind of a depiction of that, but it's made way bigger. And um, unlike the other movies that, like the Batman we know today or this year, let me tell you something, fans on both sides, that people that like this film and most people don't don't like this film. Now here's the thing. When I was young, I extremely loved this film. I'm pretty sure other people that were young that watched this film thought it was pretty cool and awesome. And, you know, they loved it. But over the years and after I watched and played games and got into other things, I started over the years when I got older up to, I would say when I was 12, I rewatched it again and I WTF what happened here. And then I, then I hated the film, but he hold it. Now over the years, I forgot about it and I came back and finally, unfortunately when the director passed away, I done a bit of research and some digging here and my different perception on how, what I, how I see in movies. And now I like this movie for what it is and what they, and the bit of the history. I don't like this, I don't love this movie. I don't hate it either. I just see it as a toy commercial, but I see it as a movie that was just being that was just having fun. That's all I see out of it. Whatever, be shitty if you if you're like, oh, you you like this movie? Oh, you're 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 not a fan or whatever. I couldn't care less of what you think about it. I would watch this movie and I would laugh with it because yeah, this this speaking of this movie actually does have really funny bits in this movie. They, really funny jokes and they have you know the puns are a bit over the top but they work so well in fact they're really impressive for this movie in fact some of the pan uh, the, the, some of the puns here are really creative some of them are not some of them are just blatantly obvious but uh, you know it's it's a movie what we, we can what can you do about it besides be all negative and just be like argumentative and just go like me me like what most people are but that's them Everyone is different, everyone has their opinion about this movie and stuff like that, but the way I see movies is different compared to so many other people, in fact, I don't just like Batman, I just, I don't just like this and that, like I keep saying before, I like everything, I'm a multi-universe fan of everything besides just Marvel or DC or this or that or whatever, in fact, I like Marvel and DC, some of the movies that they prefer to um, forget about. I like the Hulk, the original 2003 Hulk. I like the new one, I like all the versions of the Hulk. You see the thing is, Tim Burton's um, style of movie and the music composed by Daniel Elfman. Now Daniel Elfman has done so many great musics in the past and maybe in the present. I don't know if he's still a composer but he's done so many good works on, mostly on Tim Burton's movies. He's done works on the Marvel films the late Marvel films, not the ones that are connected in one big multiverse story. Like the Hulk, uh, what else? I can't remember the other ones, but they were, you know, really good extra uh, storylines that they rebooted because, yeah, Marvel. But, um, that's not what I'm, um, that's not what I'm going at. Um, so yeah, he's done... Daniel Elfman's done Dick Tracy, he's done uh, some, mu some music soundtracks for uh, Sam Raimi films like Spider-Man and I think, I don't know about The Evil Dead, I'm not too sure, but uh, he's done uh, Dark Man, one of the classic and underrated super hor uh, super superhero slash uh, dark toned uh horror sort of it's it's a it's an interesting film anyway he's done a soundtrack he's done the soundtrack of that and now here's the thing is the major problem i have i don't know why people are doing this don't know why it's a thing i'm not saying that it shouldn't be a thing but it, it makes no sense that people are comparing musics different com music compose uh different uh music composers that should have been in this, and this should have been in the art. Like for instance, you know, for instance, going back to the Batman thing, um, with Christopher Nolan's Batman movie and the, the soundtrack in that, people wanted, uh, people, some people wished and preferred Daniel Elfman's music in this movie. 
Now here's the major thing. Each composer, music composer, is set out what is what they are set out to do. And they make the music that is for the tone of the movie. So if you're going to put this music of the classic Batman theme and put it in, the, in Christopher Nolan's movie, it wouldn't really fit because the Christopher Nolan movies is more surreal and more like in the real world. It's, it's, and it's, and Tim Burton's movie is more gothic and magical and this and that. And it has, and the music in it is a bit gothic in a way. And Christopher Nolan's music is more real world sounding like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. You just gotta listen to the music and you'll see what I'm, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, it, it, I think it, it would work if you did a uh, combination of two musics in one, but that's, but my opinion about having, my opinion about people making a competition of two music comp music composers that have completely different styles and completely different tones of movies this is music composers better this is this, this is better and I'm like who cares both of them are, per are great because they're great for what they are doing and what they are for and what they did in the movies what they did the music for the movies The music in um, Christopher Nolan's Batman, um, Hans Zimmer, he's done so many great movies. He's done so many great sound uh, soundtracks for movies like the Sherlock Holmes movies, um, some of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, some other ones that I can't rem I'm, can't remember right now. But you know, there's so many other music composers out there that that make music. They get the same backlash because they refer to this like. For instance, if someone make a remake of this movie and it's completely different music and they prefer the original music, even though it wouldn't, even though they did it, they set out what they were meant to make and it wouldn't really fit the tone with the other music in the other movie. That is, that is like, I don't understand really. It's like fighting over, it's like fighting over Indiana Jones and James Bond. Both of those, both of those different series of movies are great. Fine, why compare the two? Now, moving on from discussion because I just want to get this out of the way, and I just want to say sorry if I took or misled what I was saying about the, the some of the story and context of Chris Joel Schumacher's story about the his uh, experience with the Batman films. You know, I've started watching his interviews and re-saying stuff. So yeah, I apologize if I got some of the information wrong, and I just want to get this right. So yeah, I don't think it's just Joel Joel Schumacher that also gets shit on by the media and all that kind of stuff. There's other good, famous, really good directors, and that they are being claimed as bad directors because of this or that or whatever. Oh yeah, and Night Shyamalan. He made so many fantastic movies that, you know, most people don't. Some, most people do like him, and some don't like him. Some don't like his films, some do, you know, it's a mix of, like, with all films, but... He's been, he's been, and he got claimed as a, the worst director because he, he made The Happening. Now, there's a lot, there's a story behind that, and I'm gonna shout out to, uh, Good Bad Flicks. And the, the movie The Happening... It's not a bad film. It is a good film, and it no, and it doesn't really specify what really is going on. You know, the actors, uh, the characters are explaining what could be happening, but we don't know if it's true or not. That's one of the reasons why people don't fucking understand about that movie. It could be about the plants or the nuclear nuclear plants. You know, killing pollution and the you know it's never explained. And the way people are saying his style of directing is shit is absolutely. Bullshit, because there's subtle details in his film in his uh, in the happening like like really good color camera angles. They're very he does, he's got really good work with camera angles, and it's just really pathetic. This guy he says the movie falls oddly flat, less you know this and that. And guess what? That's a critic coming from the movie Split. Yeah, I guess they're in a, their own opinion. Actually, it's just bullshit because if you watch the movie, it's not flat. 
nothing is fine. You know, calling a movie bad or calling a movie or stupid or this because you don't understand or you don't fucking know what's going on or you just really don't care about the film and it's not your cup of tea. But calling a movie awful, it, it, to movies like, uh, for instance, that have very good set pieces, very good characters, very good acting, very, you know, just, and very good directors and all that kind of stuff. And calling it flat, it just feels a bit less effort than what people make films. And they probably get more money than, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure critics get money, but not as much as fucking uh, movies, uh, movie making. The, the movies like The Happening, uh, the Lady in the, the Water, and After Earth, The Last Airbender. You know, movies that, that because directors, they do different things. Like, everyone changes and goes to do different things. Some people don't, some people do. But accusing a director of being bad because he's doing something new or different, or a different approach for a remake or whatever, etc. It's quite pathetic calling him, calling them a bad director because they're doing something new and, and you're sticking to what the director's other films used to be like. And like Shyamalan, he has done so many different movies, including one of my, one of my childhood favorites, like Do It Little. Some of the movies that he's done, some of the movies he has are like successful than others because they're different and they're, and he's going to the approach that he is going for the film. And people don't like it because it's different and, and the reason why it has less stars than others is because as a director myself, doing the same stuff over and over again can get quite boring, but it can actually improve certain things. Um, as a director, I always try to do something new. That's why I have a bunch of films that I've been working on my ass on and working on some new ones. And yeah, and they're not always gonna, and you know what? It, and people expect you to be the same or people expect movies to be as good as the other movie or a movie that's completely different to another movie that's different for instance take this for an example signs and suit little see even to your mind and my mind why compare the two they're completely different movies exactly but when when people think of the director they expect things to be the same, they expect uh, different movies, uh, upcoming movies that he's done. They expect to be the same style of directing. But uh, that's the problem. Every director is different. And that comes to my reason again why I think it's bullshit to claim a director to be bad for doing something different, doing other things different and being passionate about. I, I am being passionate about this, but this is true. And then everyone, and then the internet comes along, everything goes to a clam, calling this movie shit, and then it gets unsuccessful with the most bullshit reasons. For instance, Hellboy. The, the remake of Hellboy. I love the original movies, I love the remake as well. And the thing is, the remake has more detail and more to do with how the comics were extremely violent. I don't know about the swearing, I, I haven't read the comic books and I know, but I truly know, and I know the facts, that the remake is more like in the comics. People are bitching because it's more like the comics, and, but they don't know the comics, they never uh, read the comics or whatever, and they're complaining about of it, it because it's different. Somehow it got bad reviews and now it, it being trashed. And I don't know how it flopped. And the fact is because it was so hated and because it was unsuccessful, because no one fucking understands or n knowledge about the comic book or just because they're lingering on the other movies and, and not seeing this as a, ref a new approach on the Hellboy, a more a proper version of Hellboy. I'm not saying that the other movies weren't proper, but they're really good. But the remake was more detail, more to do with the, the what Hellboy was was basically all about. I, I understand everyone has their own opinion about this about movie they like or they don't like, but don't take it as a graph to to a point where you hate it and to a point where you tell everyone that you hate the movie to other people that actually do like the movie, and to a point that you're not just. It's not just you, but other people, and they will all get involved and claim the movie to be unsuccessful and the movie won't be successful because of the audience or because of the critics or because of the reasons why the movie flopped. You know, 
And guess what? I what I actually read a couple of critics what they had to say, and they're all bullshit because most of them were complaining about it being too violent, even though it's fucking R-rated, and it's got to do with demons and shit. And Hellboy wasn't not enough. He's a demon. I don't. It, yeah. And I also want to give a shout out to uh, Boss Level Eight. I don't. They also uh, like to make fun of critics, so that's quite amusing. I don't know if they still do it or not, but uh, I'll put the link of their, uh, their channel in the description down below with a bunch of other YouTubers that I will mention in, probably in the future in this video. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Um, yes, I don't pay attention to any uh, critics or whatever, but the thing is, because I'm not a critic myself, maybe a few things here, but I mostly don't because I'm more of a positive than a negative because I see no point being negative all the time. So the problem is what I have with critics is the fact that I don't read them because they've been paid to watch this movie and blah blah blah. Most of the critics are not aware of what this movie is like, they, 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 or they don't understand the movie, or plus they're not a fan, or, or what's the other films, this and that and that. There is some critics out there that don't know what they're talking about. Most of the time they don't or understand the fan base. For instance, Marvel. Oh, what was the TV show? I can't remember the TV show, but there was a critic here that was making no sense about this TV show. In fact, they didn't they didn't watch the the rest of the this show. They they watched season two and they're making things that don't know it doesn't make any sense and blah blah blah. And they were trying to reference bullcrap about this and that, trying to make jokes that, that are not funny because it, all it is is just comparing things that are nothing to do with the show or this or that. That's most of the time not true and most of the time you do get positive reviews and most of the time you don't. For instance, how the hell did Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade had um, critics saying that less good than Raiders of the Lost Ark? Now the thing is, the Steven, Spiel, um, Steven Spielberg was in a, there was the making of the film. He even mentioned some of the characters that weren't in Temple of Doom, and he wanted to bring all the cast members and you know the spirit and the elements of Raiders of the Lost Ark. So Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and then you get a critic saying that it's nothing like Raiders of the Lost Ark. It doesn't have any of the 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 um, feeling of Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, I understand that's their point of view and, that, and that's their opinion. But the, it, it is not an opinion, it's more of a criticism and a pair to the facts that I am talking about. So you get people going, I give them retrospective and I just give them the facts and they just spit it in my face of saying that, no, you're wrong. And you're like, it's this, no, this is how I see it. And I'm like, that's fine, but I'm just giving you real facts and what you believe in, you know, just. And it's fine, oh, now we're going to go to the thing about it. Everyone has their own beliefs about things and stuff like that. Give me some context behind how the movie was actually made. And I'm not forcing people to, you know, I'm just giving them respect, or retrospective on this movie or whatever. Because I'm more into knowledge than what most people are. I'm not saying that's always the case. I'm, and most people, that is more truth than what you might be thinking or actually saying. Anyway, moving on, now, rating systems, I never say, that, and this is another reason, people expect and people only see ratings and in movies and go like, oh, they always check the ratings to see how, what good, if, they, if the movie's good or not. I don't check the ratings. I don't even watch the trailer either. I watch the movie and it's up to us to see how good this movie is. Not up to the fucking ratings, not up to the trailers, you know, and something, even though we do. Even I watch some trailers, but I only watch some of it to give me context to what the movie is like, or just to give me good context of the style of the movie. Even though uh, trailers are very not like the style of the movie itself, because for instance, it, especially movie trailers, when the movie is still in development, what I mean by that is that I wrote this, uh, this is to do with the Sonic movie, you know, the new Sonic movie and that. So, yeah, I wrote this when 
Okay, now I had a problem here because when I was reading this entire graph that I was going to tell you guys about the Sonic movie, the new the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, I read this really poorly, so I'm redoing this, but this time I'm going to be narrating, so I don't... Something I wrote, my Facebook page, this was just on 14th of March, and... and I, 2020 so yeah i'm gonna write this uh resail this and i'm gonna skip a few things in here because they yeah it's a bit dodgy writing here so this is what i wrote <clears throat> i wrote this when the first sonic movie trailer with the first design came out and before i seen the final film of sonic the hedgehog i'm going to get a lot of hate for saying this but whatever when i first saw the first trailer of the sonic the hedgehog for the first design i did not mind it hold it i know the design was off the walls and i respect for games movies and more than people might think i felt disgusted of so many people because they would talk how garbage the, the design or shit on the artist and don't see what they were going for I could not go anywhere on YouTube or anywhere else besides when one person talks about it and shits on the new uh, the uh, original design something appears on the on the internet and all hell breaks loose sort of like the news on the internet on one thing that someone made because it becomes a living hell don't get me wrong I like the new design of Sonic the Hedgehog but I felt bad for the designer for trying to do something new with the Sonic to make him more to make him look what Sonic would look like in the real world that comes to stuff like by judging the movie by the, the look of the tone and choice designs people instantly would hate it even though it's a bloody trailer not the full film in fact some people don't understand things change throughout production when they are still working on the film etc after the first trailer was released it remind it reminds me the hate on the super mario brothers movie i love that film yes i know the questionable and i understand un questionable things about but if you know the making and issues makes it understandable and people hate it because it's not nothing to do with the game even though that is a lot of dog shite because the director made a script that was dark and serious at time in the script of the Mario game that is aimed for kids and adults. That he went out and used his creative skills and make a story that works. And how in the world would you make a Mario movie that is based on the first game at the time? It would be a short but the Super Mario Brother movie is great because the director went to great level from the problems on the set to the amount of d different rewrites from firing different directors over time to a point they bring a director to fix the mess but could not fix then what became lots of plot points from the dancing bits to the directors caused what I'm really trying to say that I don't hate it any of it and making a movie based on a game will always get crap from people like people that love it because it's different or people that hate it because it's different or hate it to begin with but it's not always the case here I understand why the sonic design was changed don't be so harsh on the person that made the first sonic design he was doing something different and following his idea I'm not saying that the first design or the new one was good or bad. I'm only stating the important fact about the issue. I don't I don't care what people think. Yes, I know the design of the Sonic is different. Yes, I know the game developer and fans are not going to like it. It's understandable, but guess what? See it in a new perspective. When I watch a movie, even a game-based movie, I always see through the director's vision on outside movies to me I like work of art you share ideas dreams and etc I don't etc and stuff like that so I, I talked about all this again by accident and then I wrote this in 2020 now I seen the film and is exactly what I was expecting I blame somewhat blame the marketing of the trailers 
and uh, the posters and such that shows the best bits. I mostly kept myself away from spoilers all the time. But beside that, and as I said before, I love the film for what it is. And I was right, I love it for what it is. And I see it as a start for other films in the series of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, maybe Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and 3 could cover it later on. Dr. Robotnik has found a way to explore other worlds and Sonic meets with more characters like we already seen on like Tails so far and other characters we will might be introduced like Knuckles, Sally, Amy and so on and later team up to stop Dr. Robotnik to claim back their worlds from what's been overtaken by Eggman slash Robotnik would be the reason on uh, Tails may be looking for Sonic and possible, possibly later on would have darker themes like uh, the robotic Sonic or werewolf Sonic or the evilness of Dr. Robotnik and more of the plot and mysteries unfold like in the beginning of Sonic the Hedgehog in the beginning of the film it's just a thought really so yeah so that's what I basically wrote but accidentally he had hiccups in there but you know what I'm coming across as but that's just an example of how people don't see trailers there's most of the times trailers can be in development because this was just an example while the movie is still being made and things can change and people can just shut up and stop complaining about what they think about it until the movie comes out and then they uh, and then they go like oh my god yeah I regret what I've said before, this is actually brilliant, or whatever, and it's like, yes, they fix it, or whatever. That's just a side note of usually how trailers are, but comparing to the sometimes trailers can also can actually fully uh, false advertise what the movie is about. For instance, with another movie of M. Night Shyamalan, this movie that he directed called Lady in the Water. Now, this movie is supposed to be a fantasy, mystery, kids film. And, and it got, I don't know, three stars because, because it was claimed as a horror movie on the trailers. M. Night Shyamalan, you know, he's claimed for uh, making a lot of uh, scary... Lady in the Water was not meant to be one of those. It was meant to be for a movie that he can kids tale for bedtime story. That's what it's meant to be like. But no, the trailer just falsely... I don't know what happened. I think it's because someone... In the cutting room floor i saw the ways of his other films like horror for instance and took a point of seeing this as a horror film and not give a shit about the director of, of his vision or any respect really of what he was going for way and that's why people saw it as a horror film and they blame and some people blame him for making the movie look like it's a horror movie but it really isn't i never understood that and it would probably be more successful if the trailer handled properly this is why I don't listen to other what other people, or I do listen to other people, but it doesn't mean I have to agree with them. What other people think about movies and how they see it. And this is an example of one of the critics. Now I'm not going to mention the names. I'm not going to mention whatever they they uh, put three stars because they're. But they one of them called uh, the la the lady in the water lousy and too s simplistic. The movie is more more of a train wreck bullshit about this and that elements lose ends and shit like the movie wasn't simplistic at all it was a very unique and interesting tale that he did and don't know why when people talk about this movie people also like to um combine make similarity to this movie to this movie now the problem is movies have been made during the during the long century, before people, you, or I, are even born. Movies began during, I, don't, I can't remember, since it began. And it's hard to make new films every fucking day. And it's not easy to make something that is similar that's been made before, like, for instance, action, uh, adventure, all, all, you know, and it's hard to make new films. It's ha really hard to direct or make stories that are very unique compared to other ones and movies that are scarier 
scary uh, compared to other films, you know, this and that. And usually some films like to copy other films due to its success or parody of this and that. So that's a different story. And so the whole uh, thing calling the worst director is and having a golden raspberry reward and it's just bullshit, really. It really is. And having a Raspberry f Award for Worst Supporting Actor? The fuck? In my opinion, in my point of view. There was no bad film, because it was set out what it was meant to be made. And you know, if you look at this movie and you see the trailer, and you'll see some weird things that don't make sense and differences. Because there was problem in development of the movie, or changes, or whatever. You have, your mind has to be open up to what you think, not Think or have less faith into a movie. Really, it is. <clears throat> Speaking of people that don't have faith in movies, especially with teasers. In fact, I got a, the new movie that's coming very soon, like Dune and Labyrinth. Uh, it's a, a, like a sequel of Jim Henson's The Labyrinth with David Bowie, one of the great puppet movies. In fact, here's one of the things I don't appreciate: is the fact that people. Um, are very long time fans of this movie or this movie and they don't expect anything but a remakes to be shit a lot of remakes are actually pretty good in fact some turns out to be actually sequels like the Blade Runner 2049 how I love that film and people were complaining and shitting about the sequel of the original Blade Runner and it turns out it, it's a really good film and unfortunately that has a, a, a story of people shitting on it and saying it's boring and stuff like that even though I can't wait to see what the, the new June movie is going to be like and what they're going to do with this ever. I can't wait for that film. In fact, that's why I hate people when they go like, oh this is going to turn out terrible and I'm going to put thumbs down and shit like that because they don't know the director or they don't know the director's intentions or what his mind is like on this movie. Same thing with my movies. People, you know, they they, they do give me um, some extra points here and there that I could put in this movie. That, but I keep saying them. It's all scripted down. I'm I'm fine with it. Thanks for giving me the, some ideas. In fact, to a point where some go like, no, I want it to be more like this and something like that. It's my fucking movie, not yours. Anyway, I'm gonna point out a movie that's been um, been hasn't been. I don't know. It's been talked about or not, but was a new film that was coming out that was discussed back in 2019 I think it was to do with the new Willy Wonka film now as it says and it's an ex exclusive news in the UK now I looked into it there wasn't much info about it but it said even though it was in the title it says new film could see Willy Wonka return to screens as a woman in prequel in prequel so that gives you enough details but unfortunately a lot of people here find it as a negative thing now i understand from their point of view but the thing is there's not much information about it the movie in fact most of it is uh laughing and anger emojis and some of it is actually uh, likes uh, i don't know if that means people actually see it as something but most of the time you got like common gifs you know those things where they have moving pictures and that having people going like that or run downs or just saying all for women having big or strong walls but when you change shit like this it's stupid you get a bunch of other bullshit about this and that about Willy Wonka and that will how can Willy Wonka be a girl look at his name it said see that it, it just bothers me because they they don't they're not thinking the point I got me thinking about the movie a bit more in fact I even written down here this is what I said. Seriously, people, this is a picture and a teaser for a new film. Instead of moaning about why a female is playing as Willy Wonka, maybe you need to think about it. People that see something like this go nuts without being or thinking positive or looking into it. Because when a film has been talked about while, while being in the middle of being made, but when the film trailer comes out, it's the same, but when you see the film itself you end up understanding and enjoying it oh by the way it's been said it as it's been said a prequel maybe this is before Willy Wonka was called Willy Wonka or, or 
and even thinking about William Wonka has been aging throughout the, the years but to use golden tickets to select his replacements to take over the factory William Wonka, the name is more of a code, a brand name for candy and sweets and chocolates and a woman playing the role of Willy Wonka could maybe a early replacement of taking over the factory, who knows, maybe the first before the replacements in the timeline in the factory. So you understand what I'm coming across, again with, you know, in the story behind Willy Wonka that even Willy Wonka even says that he's getting old and he can't take care of the factory very long, so guess what he does, he takes, he gives Charlie to take care of the factory, which means he will be the new Willy Wonka in the, like, you know, if he takes it or not, and in the remake it describes more details about Willy Wonka and talks about uh, Charlie, and what's what I thought was really cool and really interesting that he didn't take it as soon because he cared about his family, and, you know, so I love the differences between the original and the new movie. And this could, in fact, be a proper prequel and proper slash kind of a sequel kind of thing. Not not in terms of an actual sequel sequel of Charlie and that, but in the sense of the the movie and Willy Wonka changes through different people before, like a code, a name, you know, something that you have to. It's like a group, you know. Willy Wonka goes, gives the factory to another person that becomes like him, does stuff like him, or you know, things that to do in the name of Willy Wonka himself, or itself. And in fact, keep the recipe secret. Now I don't know about being bonkers, who knows, I don't know about that, but... Anyway, it's just all, of, all these things to think about before uh, getting way into involved, and not thinking straight, or just getting mad for no reason whatsoever. In fact, the movie I'm talking about, William Wonka, could not be the case, but who knows? In fact, it, now I want to get into a discussion about how people do not pay attention to other people. In fact, this was to do with, I don't know, he's a uh, 80s fan person, he has an 80s fan group, and he always bring up discussions about this and that, I don't know, I don't have enough context behind him. Or what this guy is talking about but anyway to the case I'm talking about is the fact that he mentions I won't allow that flag on here which is the the confederate flag I am not risking this group because of it if you don't agree go find another group if you won't help out of this just say so now here's the thing this is what I'm talking about where people don't pay attention or listen to other people what they have to say in fact, other people are sort of going against him, but also giving out some history, maybe proper history about the uh, flag. For instance, this guy says the last res resort of today's moron is to call people a racist without, with no knowing, with no actual proof of racism. This group supposedly celebrates the '80s, yet if people post the car from one of the most popular shows, you will ban slash block them. There says more about you and your weaknesses. Now again, I think that's a bit harsh and a bit of, you know, there's some truth to that, but I don't know much about the context behind the person. And guess what? There is so many comments about the flag. In fact, the thing got blocked because no one listened to him or had to say, and they just kept saying, the same shit like what the other guy said and just in fact got to a point where the page got blocked because this guy mentioned the flag in a way and it's kind of uh, the entire group's fault and kind of a bit of his fault because I don't know why he mentioned in the first place maybe I don't know reason I'm not aware of because I don't have enough context anyway moving from that that was just another example so the final example I'm gonna talk about Okay, this was to do with, you know, the, the, re, the new movie of Dr. Doolittle came out. Now, there was a picture of, no, there was a picture of the teaser of the movie. And I mentioned this before in similar detail of the other things I've mentioned before. But again, with the same kind of 
thing about what people were look, seeing as they were having the thumbs down and getting angry about it because all they've seen is the teaser. In fact, in fact, I know everyone has an opinion, but you cannot jump to the gun and say and criticize how this is going to turn out or something like this. In fact, I even commented again, can't wait for this. I can't wait. When a new movie comes out that's based on slash reboot or sequel comes out, people go mad or love it. And all I see is the same responses of so many people saying why or something about the grow, the, the, about they grow up with the one they enjoy, like for instance, uh, something they grow, like a movie that they loved as a kid and they grew up watching it and they still love it. Over attached fan of this movie and with the one they enjoy, maybe we should watch it as a new thing. A new perspective instead of hissing at it we have not seen it we get the, a poster or a trailer and the world goes insane with the same types of comments people I understand you like the original and understand as a I understand as a filmmaker and explore some new things and seeing a remake or whatever won't do anything only you will be the problem trying argue argument that it, it's a new film that's been made before and try and connect see it as a refreshing take on it don't see it as what so many people that would think it it's so goddamn predictable not the film but us as to the view as the views the audience now i was not being negative i wasn't trying to attack anyone but i was just giving them again a retrospective not to an extent to be uh, I wasn't, in fact, I was not uh, going like, rrr, 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 rrr. no, I was calm and just saying this. In fact, and what I really appreciate, I really love the fact that people take it out of context or intentionally contradict themselves. And this is exactly what happened. There's, a, there's these people that I'm not going to mention. And guess what? Point where I stopped. Here, here we go. This person said, okay calm down um, and then I mentioned thanks but I am calm and it's just a statement then a random other person that, that that I don't know any of these people and that's always the problem with the internet and I already mentioned the statement before that's not a statement that's a that's a fucking book and I respond whatever I'm not the one that does not know between a book or a statement I said it on most people think about a reboot slash remake or a sequel and I moved on from this because I bet more people that's going to take this out of context. Like, and guess what? They did. More people came and told me bullshit things like, oh, well then you should not be on the internet or this and that. I'm like, you know, this and to a point that I just got up and I just moved on from it and I love it how people are trying to calm you down even though you're already calmed down to a point where they actually piss you off of not understanding you and taking you out of the context to this point it's very ironic and absolutely stupid anyway now I'm gonna move on from this to uh, what I think about what's going on with Doctor Who the TV show science fiction show what I think of it now and what's been going on lately Doctor Who where it's going right now um I love Doctor Who I love the classic era I love the new series I love it where it's heading right now fortunately with other dickheads out there that don't and mostly don't because they don't like change and things and I love where the new series is going it's it's totally unique not in the sense but like it, to the sense of the other episodes but it's a new approach and, and it's a different feeling and you know you just got the female doctor it, the female doctor was gonna it was gonna be a thing anyway from it was it was hint hinting out throughout the series this whole thing about uh people being sexist about the female doctor it's kind of still a thing now and some people are still being sexist about it, most people aren't anymore, but here's the thing. Back in the classic era, with the first Doctor in the first episode was ever re re on television, the Doctor had a granddaughter. Yes. 
And later on in the classic series, where we get to see the Time Lords and their history and shit, they also had female Time Lords. And going all the way to, I don't know, David Tennant's era. With one of the episodes where he forced him to uh, DNA engineered a another copy of his uh, cells and created another person, daughter-in-law of the Doctor. Don't know what happened to her, I hope she comes back, maybe not, maybe it's forgotten, I don't know. But, for Pete's sake, even including the Master for crying out loud. Now here's the thing, when the Master was got uh, regenerated into Missy, later on in the series, uh, she, she became, she becomes a completely, she slowly becomes different, uh, a different person, like the Master, and has more, a little bit of empathy in a way. The Missy's other self shot her, which ends up killing her and uh, erasing her. Then the master regenerates to uh, re regenerates down to the um, elevator, and he would he becomes a completely different master. Now here's the thing: no one, I have no, no one ever argued the fact that uh, the doctor's granddaughter was the female. No one complained about that. No one complained about uh, daughter. For being female in the Time Lord. Don't complain about that. No one complain about freaking Missy for crying out loud. But no. None of those things matters. But the Doctor had to be female. Really? That's the problem? That's the reason why... And that, that is extremely fucking stupid. Why people find it... And people are sexist about that. And sex is about the doctor being a female is absolutely pathetic. And especially some of the people are calling it out being sexist because they have never seen the show to begin with. Sorry, I got passionate there, but see, the thing is, people, if you don't like it, that's fine. It's fine, but if you're gonna be completely saying that the director is a terrible person, or he's done, he's fucked up uh, Doctor Who, or he's, he's like this or that or whatever, I don't like the new series, that's fine. But don't be an absolutely asshole to this director. You know, he gets so much shit. You no know, wonder why he changed how Doctor Who is now. Not in the uh, story and the episode side of it, as in how things used to be like with the Christmas special. Um, how episodes used to be uh, going because episodes would be uh, you would have like a uh, week then you have an, a new set of episodes he the, the director uh, Chris has been taking longer much more longer than other than other episodes have been done because I blame the audience on this run and blame that the, all the hate mail and all the shit that he probably doesn't care and probably works on something and make us enjoy what he's trying to do what he's trying to go with the doctor because we always have and it's hard to make new stories so that's why the new directors make new stories about new characters uh, and stuff like that and this director is trying to do something new for once and it's a shame because it doesn't it goes to show that the fans and you know, the media and all that are in control of what the fans want. And the thing is, this the new director, Chris, well, not the, the, the director, Chris, he's not doing this to please the fans or anything. He's doing this to give us new shows. He's, I mean, he's giving us, he's giving us stories and, you know, what he's trying to do. And not see it against that. And people are complaining that his stories are weirder and simpler than other uh, stories. Even though that is complete bullshit. There is so many, so many stories, in fact, so many good ones that compared to his is like gold star. You know, so his, his stories, yes, they're weird. Some of the stories are weird and that, but guess what? Back in the classic era and all that, their stories and their... And the, some of the new stories uh, from the, the other series are weird as well, and that's... I don't understand why people had a problem with the writing. Here's the thing, Chris was going for a look 
and a approach that's a mixed in the classic era with all the, like the four companions and stuff and all the companions are very good with they their stories are very good in fact and also I never understood why you know it's it it's and it comes to a point where the fans the fans rage about it to a point where they try to and to a point where the director gets taken down is just goes to show that fans only care about the fan base and are, are extremely poisoned. I I'm a fan myself but I'm not as big and overly attached to like certain fan bases. I used to be, but here's the thing. You can't be just a one fan of this all the time you gotta be fan i'm a fan of a lot of things besides just doctor who and that doesn't lead me to an overage fan addict prick that would try to get call out the new director for being this or that or even taking the director out and trying to get a new director and a new doctor because you didn't like this you didn't like that it's not up to us to decide that the director should be called out, not up to us, decide how the show should be going. And people are saying that the show is dead because they, because the fan base hate the new director, or because they didn't like the writing, or because of these, all these reasons. The show is not fucking dead. It was never dead. The only thing a couple times have the show has been confirmed to be dead is the fact during the classic era where they had a low budget and the fact is there was points where they couldn't keep making episodes but all the charity work and the later with the seventh doctor they kind of fixed that and unfortunately it happened again and during 2005 they revived it and that's how they saved doctor who that's what they, it was never dead if it was dead no one would be talking about it in fact people are still talking about it and still watching it even the classic era even the new series so why people are claiming it dead who knows besides they're just trying to get the revenue of other fan base of their bullshit reasons of why they hate the new series and you know i know everyone has their opinion on the new series and it's up to them but don't take it to a point of calling out the director in fact it leads to me saying this and i understand people don't accept change that's fine you have to live with it you in real life right now i'm living with it you know i'm accepting change into a lot of things you know i'm becoming a different person i've been doing that since the beginning i'm, be I'm being aggressively aggressively becoming a different person the way i'm talking right now i'm having a beard how i see things and you know all those things and work and school is over for me and yeah people don't accept or consider what they want and what they want to see bloody control freaks unlike other people i love the, where this new series is going and it's been so unappreciated so much from fans and over attached uh fans of doctor who and uh, not just doctor who but other things and other tv shows out there or movies and it just bothers me that people saying doctor who is dying if that's true then why are people still watching it why am i talking about it and it pains me to see this that chris and jody chris the director and jody as the, uh, the new doctor what looks like and what seems like they're moving on they're not going to be uh, be a part of doctor who. now i don't know if that's true or not from what i read it could be fucking false who knows we don't know the facts besides what's what's said we need to know from the director and Jerry. and who knows maybe i haven't come across that information maybe i didn't see it maybe chris has already already announced it that i wasn't aware of if that's the case just tell me and then all right uh yeah um but it it just goes to show that other people in the world forcing other people to get what they want and not what creative people share in their creative stuff part of my passion as a filmmaker movies is what i'm all about i'm, I'm a passion of uh all everything really i love most of the movies that people hate i love movies that most people do love 
are being accused as bad or good movies. Control all over the world it is so, you know, amazing to me that things have never changed into people, like people have never changed. Um, most people do, most, most people don't. You've got different groups of people that, here's an example, I'll give you an example. Back at school, I loved Five Nights at Freddy's, the game and Doctor Who, and a bunch of more that I'm also a fan of. I'm not just a fan of Doctor Who or uh, Friday's Freddy's. I always get people go like, oh my god, you're into Doctor Who, and this and stuff like that, and all they talk about, just talk about is Doctor Who. And I always discuss things about other things, and I always sometimes get give them some retrospective, or at least give them some story that they might like learn about. But here's the thing. They, they don't give a shit what I have to say, they're like, what they love about it, and you know, they get passionate as well. But it, it makes you not want to talk to them, if they're just gonna talk about what they love, of, and not talk about other things that you or I appreciate. So there's a lot of things in life that you can love, you can't just stick with one thing. And also, for getting bullied because you like something, because they don't like something, has been going on since... People get beat up because they like something that the person doesn't, and it doesn't... And what pisses me off is that it just doesn't happen at schools, it also happens to, you know, grown full on adults. I get, get tons and tons of shit on because I like Finance of Freddy's, or I like this, or I like that. Because they go like, oh, I don't like it, or whatever, and I'm like, fuck off, and walk away, don't talk about it, or, you know, don't talk to me if you don't like it. I get beat up because I like something, and to a point that I had to that I have to defend myself, not just the things I like. You know, and the thing is, about talking about things that you like, for instance, like movies, video games, and stuff like that, it's not just about what you're into. It's also about uh, talking to other people as just a person. You know, I like to be respected as a person, not just because of what I'm into, like filmmaking and stuff like that. It's more like hobbies and my work and goals and dreams in future life. I also... People discussing about topics and other topics that have nothing to do with me, but have to do with, let's say, history or something, you know, just other things that doesn't have to revolve around just the same subject like movies or video games or this or that. You know, just talk to each other as people. And that's one of the problems that I have, also one of the problems I have on the internet, is the way people and other people don't treat it, treat each other like a person. You know, because for if you like have one mistake, like you've written one mistake here and there, people are gonna shit on you for life because, and the thing is they don't know you, and you don't know them, and they always judge you, and they always do this and do that, things that have been going on for the last humans have began to walk on the face of the planet and the beginning of the time in the world stuff like that has been going around for centuries and we're we're in we're in the we're in the world where it's like 2020 now things have changed not just because of the coronavirus but how we have respect with other people um how we treat other people now different people different backgrounds all that can be all as everyone's different Oh yeah, might as well get political, because all I get for all, all the reason why I don't spend time on the internet about how people treat other people, you know, for instance, um, when people watch a video and they say this is rubbish, that's fine, but commenting about it and saying it is just just so unnecessary. Might as well just say this is great. For what it is, I enjoy it. That's it. And it, that's just a, a quick example. There's more detail stuff like that. If you don't like the video, just don't watch it. It's simple with movies, TV shows, be going on the media. And you know what? I if I the first well, when I get rid of what I want to get rid of, not me personally, but others, is the fact that why the media should get rid of is that. They have uh, private detectives to make this thing as a story for people. And those people and the people out there are trying to protect their families and shit from these detectives. And 
For instance, uh, PewDiePie. He gets tons of crap from uh, the media and all that kind of stuff. From not just people, but people that are trying to accuse him of crap, make him as a criminal and shit. It, and it's all false to a point where like teachers, well, there, there was an example of a teacher that uh, saying all, just got into the media too much and saying all this to Peter Pie and trying to claim uh, students not to watch him, saying that he's a terrible person. That's all, it, it's all lies. It, it really is. And, and, it can wreck, and it can wreck so many people to a point where it can get idiotic with, with uh, politics removing shit like for it, what's, what happened recently was anime. This guy was trying to make a, a point. There, there is, I understand what he was trying to come across, but it's complete fucking stupid that the fact that this guy is trying to get rid of, trying to ban anime of saying that. Yes, it, yes, some of the and some of the shows that he points out contains uh, children and perverted stuff. But that's not the, those shows are not aimed for fucking children. And and some of the things that he points out to some of the anime shows are completely false. And he pronounces characters wrong and shit like that. And and the term he always quotes as normal. Now, I always say that weird is more normal than normal itself. In a degree, not always the case, but it makes you who you are. And to a point that he, he treats like, he treats this anime stuff as real life. It's all fictional. And a lot of people don't know fucking fictional. Everything. Most of the movies. Um, TV shows, maybe, maybe to the degree of some movies that are based on a true story, but idiots out there that get involved. And for instance, like The Last of Us, uh, the second uh, video game, I can't remember, I didn't play it or go into it, but I read about, and what I've heard is that one of the actors that were just doing was as a role as a bad character and doing bad shit to the uh, main characters. One of the actors that was doing the job get a lot of hate mail because what, she, what it was doing to the main characters in video games. People are so fucking stupid. It really is. People don't know. I'm not saying that you are stupid or whatever, this is stupid or whatever, that. but the fact is, no one has learned anything. A lot of people have, most people haven't. Just talk to people, no shit, before, I don't know, going into it. All right, this was, this, this, here's an example. This was in 2017, and yes, this video is not popular. I don't give a fuck about likes or dislikes or views, but I mostly care about what I put in. In fact, this was a, my top five things you probably didn't know in my movie series of episode one. Now, this was at the beginning that I was working on my series, fan-made series that I've been working on my ass off for like nine years now. Sometimes I say eight or nine, I forget how many, but yeah, this video wasn't that popular, I don't care. And the, my movie series isn't that popular to begin with anyway, even though it's absolutely fantastic and brilliant. And it's much more smarter than people think. So I got passionate there, but it was just all about things and discussing not really well. Um, some things I kept, uh, some, th some of the details I kept secret because due to spoilers for episode two and three and four. But I point out things that I did similar and I did a tribute and shout out to a, a YouTuber that's a bit of a critic to Final Fantasy Freddy's, but mostly some of her FNAF stories, but I was young. Didn't know much about Matt Pat at the time. Didn't know much about other YouTubers. Didn't even know much about her. So it's a little bit uh, pointless, but not to a sense of uh, giving her some little credit and promotion, which is a nice thing I've done. But then I I, I mentioned that sorry if I sound weird in this. I was sick while filming and recording this. 
two years later that mentioned when I said his name is Matt Pops. Now it says please put even a re resemblance of effort into your videos. Thanks. Now I didn't want to mention this because he uh, he has no fucking uh, videos that he has done. A gallery of favorites, and he's pretty much I know from the get go he's a troll, but it pains me to do this and point this out and point this guy out. And now I don't want to put hate mail to this care uh, to this guy. The fact is, even I moved on from this video in 2017 to work on other shit. But this is just an example of you always get from people and a year later in 2018 where I got good at my shit I even responded resemblance of effort what the hell does that mean I was sick and unwell and this was the age of me first making videos I'm done better if you don't like it then go away this could be him just saying put effort into your videos it makes sense if I put this out in the wrong context because that's but the way he said it, and the way he put it out, doesn't feel very, uh... You know what? I got a saying, and... And I mention it all the time, that negative doesn't get you anywhere, and positive things get you everywhere, so... And now, all I see is negative shit about... To do with things that I enjoy, like movies and that. I don't care what you think about my channel. This is my channel. Not yours. You know, do shit that you can do in your own channel. Don't claim what other people should or shouldn't do. Or even questions or make a statement or this or that. Depends on really what the statement is and the meaning behind it. But if it goes to a point where it's just the most simplest and think, for an example, pretty much describes that your comment has as less effort than most of the videos that I make or other people make. And now I can just say to a point that my older, older of my first videos. See, I was young and, uh, you know, I did, wasn't the ways of YouTube and I had been watching YouTube before I had a YouTube channel for the longest time. I was new with this, so I did have, I did sort of, um, took things from other people, but I definitely did credit those people that re truly deserve and truly make and that and like for instance the Godzilla Shin Godzilla uh, video I've done uh, those that have the same music that's and it's the music that's from actual movies um, YTPs and a collaboration of a mess video that I don't know why I still have but I do it because it shows history of me progressing from a young standpoint all the way up to where I am now. And you can see all these things that, yeah, most of the stuff that I made myself, like the music, even though it's based off of other people's music. This music here, compared to their music here, is extremely different because they're not the same video. My video and my music, I use the software. Videos like unboxing videos. Things sharing a bit of history and showing things I love. Movies. Okay, here's an example. Now this has happened recently. This was to do with Overlord. This is one of my favorite films. And I mentioned this before a year ago. I think two years ago on YouTube on another video that's to do with Overlord. I mentioned how I love this movie and... You know, um, it shocks me in some pieces because I didn't watch the trailers at all because I had it on Plex. Plex is a thing where you can, it's all, but you can download movies and, uh, you know, without uh, watching in the cinemas or buying the mo movies. No, I do buy movies. I still do. I do buy movies uh, because I like to get special features that you can't get or because they're being taken down by YouTube. Anyway, that's a different story. Yeah, here it is. Here's here's something, and again, it's not. Good. I'm not attacking anyone. Before I'm going to mention this, this whole message I did here is a little bit, uh, a little bit off to me because I was tired of re saying things. Point that I've lost tension and 
lost passion. Not into what I love or movies, but lost passion of what I, I've been saying to other people that don't know me or what I like to a point where I get so fed up and I just get lesser and less detail about what I like and how I am. It depends on how well I am. Flat out, me, as when I was tired and I quickly had to respond this. I was gonna write how fantastic this movie is, but then I'm seeing bullshit once again about another great movie saying how this movie sucks as well. Well, I know everyone has their opinions about saying this movie is awful. You have a lack of understanding about history. No, yeah, uh, this is exactly what I said. You have, have a lack of understanding about history or watch a lot of films. WTF, it's a horror movie horror slash adventure movie in World War Two and has the style of a of real or myth Nazi experiments and bits of like Wolfenstein and HP Lovecraft and Frankenstein subjects. Saying the acting is bad or annoying, WTF, you're wrong, you are young or have no final knowledge, bite me. I don't like to get into these things as I have big respect in people personally and as a filmmaker and don't spend time on the internet with other people that don't understand or spend much in the media or whatever or over attached whatever why am i what should end this because i am always defending my love in good movies and i know everything is not in everyone's taste in movies but making a point always gets taken out of context especially me now, here's the thing, yes, it does sound a bit, uh, a bit rude and a bit narcissistic that it, because I didn't mention all the details and I didn't mention like, because in fact this would make a, a longer fucking humongous comment that probably no one's going to read. In fact, people didn't even read it and people and this this guy named uh i'm not gonna mention his name because i don't want anyone to attack him or anything now he said uh exactly the term what i just said what i just written down people are allowed in an opinion but if they have a different opinion to me about this then they're wrong and stupid so much hypocrisy in one and statement it's he's supposed to say a statement so yeah he basically rewrite what I read uh, what I said but change here and there that didn't even I never basically mentioned anything and this brings to the fact that why people are too stupid people are just spend too much time on the and don't know people personally this guy I don't know who the fuck this is he doesn't even know me I don't even know him and he, and he thinks that I'm like this guy's about like I don't know in his 40s or 50s 60s I don't know the case but then I responded back, um, thanks for not understanding, I know exactly what response I was gonna, gonna get, and getting people contradicting themselves. I was not being hypocrisy, I was taking, I was talking about a, st a statement that I have been going through, everyone has their own opinions, yes of course it's fine, but if it's criticism that's different, I can't even bothered to get into detail because I said this before over and over and over that which means less detail into the fact and statement I was making to a point people that don't know me personally besides here the internet would judge or assume who or what I what I am and people in the world of something that did this or something once here especially one poor comment that I did while being tired of an amount of statements I've done but def defending the movie and my passion and life of a filmmaker and an artist and respecting people but here is why I don't spend my time on the internet not saying you're a bad person or accusing people that wasn't pointing here or attacking but why talk about something a person hates when you can say this movie wasn't for me but I can see why others do or don't mention it whatsoever why just move over move on to something you enjoy
but that's my case and your case is calling me for being something I'm not and as a suggestion do some research before talking and about this about a person you're describing I'm 18 and from what I can gather is that you you're way older than I am you might consider that I might be not what you think I am I'm tired and less detailed comment that I did anyway end of discussion and people will always come to point me wrong and sh or shit on what I got to say and basically everyone gets that as in everyone gets the same shit and comes to back to the thing I mentioned before people will uh, call you out on something that you did and it just bothers me because you don't know this person let's like shit on it and let's be a part of it it's like bullying in school the way this person looks the way that this looks oh he's a, from a different country the oh he's it never ends it will never end until everyone is probably a robot and has the same functions to everyone because that would make everyone fucking in the world boring wouldn't it okay i think i went, went way far into this and i think i should uh discussing about <sighs> let's talk um oh yeah funko all right let's talk about funko you, if you don't know what funko is it's uh a company a toy company that's been working on mostly fun not fun of freddy's out of all things but they've been doing funko pops and this and that they've also been doing other uh franchises about this and that but really we're here to talk about here is the mistake they did on long time attached fans are shitting on Funko. And I kinda I agree that they what they did was bad. Because what they did is you know, they've been working on so much shit like about the finance finance of Freddy. So you also got categories of different style of figurines, different style of this, different style of that. No wonder why those mistakes happen with some of the figurines and weird paints that are wrong compared to others with Finance of Freddy's because I think they're they're getting way into involved with uh, Finance of Freddy's merchandise again as I'm not I'm not saying that's a bad thing I'm not saying that's a good thing but uh, that is um, I think they should take things slow and, and have things in order uh, like the Finance of Freddy's figurines to like from the first game to the second game do more figurines and um, Stuff like no things as a company uh, maybe the reason why they don't have some of the figurines from the other video games is due to licensing and making the designs that even saying that and why is they are the company to make fights of Freddy's merchandise now I'm not saying that this company is bad or anything they do have every 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 company toy company has have done mistakes in that but it comes to a point where if you make one huge mistake everyone's gonna shitting on you and here now I'm gonna mention what they did wrong now the new game of Finance of Freddy's uh, Scott Coffin is still developing the game and Scott Coffin's teased this game of not giving us uh, what what really the characters look like and it was to give us uh, excited what these gonna be like uh, look like and then uh, Funko released the figurines of the designs of the animatronics that we are not fully meant to see. And I know people are going to be like, oh, what have you done? You destroyed the fan base because of this. You spoiled everything. You destroyed everything. Funko didn't really destroy the fan base. They didn't really, they, they didn't wreck the game. But I can tell you what they, they did truly did wrong. Now here, here I'm going to mention this. Now I don't know the facts and I don't know much into the invo um, info about this because there's very little besides people shitting about uh, what, what Funko has done and they feel bad about Scott Coffin. Here's the thing, we don't know if Funko was allowed, on, because Funko is a company, not just one person. There's a lot of people involved with Funko, so, the, the, so you gotta think of this. You gotta, you gotta realize the fact that maybe some dickhead uh, got away with releasing these too early and then, then they should have. Or maybe they were, or maybe Funko in a whole decided to release these uh, because, uh, due to, because of money and that. Uh, and saying that, 
revenue, they get revenue of 560 million in USD. So they they are successful. So we don't know if uh, Scott Coffin uh, authorized and allowed Funko to release this a uh, bit early. Now that doesn't sound like uh, that um, to me, and that doesn't sound like what would Scott Coffin do because he's still in development of the game. But here's the thing: we don't know. We don't have all the details. We don't know the facts. You know, maybe there is some um, information that I'm not aware of. But to my knowledge and what I'm saying right now, we don't know. We can't jump the gun and um, bullshit about this and bullshit about that. But I can tell you one thing that I, I think Funko needs to do. See, the problem, the real problem is the fact that when Funko releases the uh, the figurine, I don't know if they are already releasing that because there is apparently now they have uh, they're working on the plushies. And you can... But here's the thing: it's not just Funko's problem; it's also Scott Coffin's problem. When Scott Coffin's while developing the game, and if these figurines are released, and then the game comes out, and all the details and the development has changed, you get figurines and their designs look completely different to the video game. Their designs look different, so you'll you'll just get. So Funko will complain about Scott for doing this. Scott will complain about Funko for doing this, and it'll just be a complete fucking mess, really. And the best way to do this, fix it, solve the solution. Don't release these figurines, but maybe cancel them until the game comes out. Then you can um, maybe put look into the detail about the uh, animatronics and that, and then you can put the detail on the figurines, and then you can release them and the plushies. Don't jump the gun. Now, maybe this is because of making money. If that's the case, maybe Funko should work on something different. And then it goes, now I guess, and yeah, I think that's what Funko should do. Now again, I don't know all the facts, I don't know if this is was done on purpose due to some dickhead in the company, or is it the whole company that was allowed to do this, or was forced to do this, or doing this because they need the money, or because Scott let them do it, who knows the case, we don't know. Anyway, now this thing about people voting uh, the next company to take over all the FNAF merch. Now, I don't think it should be up to us. I don't know why, uh, you know, they, they got good opinions of like um, Sanchi, Hasbro and all that. I'm not, I'm not um, saying that they're, that's a bad thing or a good thing, but the thing is, it's not up to us to decide on, it's not up to us to decide that, oh, Funko, you, you gotta stop doing this. We, we want a new company. You know, I, I understand that. But uh, it's not up to us to decide that who should be the next company. I think it's up to Funko and Scott Coffin. Now, I think the best solution, and the best way to do it is that if Funko profit from, got profit and did profit to other toy companies, and it's not just them, mostly doing all of the FNAF merch. For instance, like Sanchi, they did the plushies, they did a good work on the plushies. Now, if Funko uh, can have profit from other uh, companies that do all, like separate toy companies that do a specific thing, that's sort of happening that was during the beginning, but it's not major, major big, as other toy companies like Marvel toys, like like for instance Hasbro, like um, DC Comics toys, because oh, it, it, you get there's a bunch of toys, a bunch of figurines about Marvel or DC that have so many different companies. It's not just one company like Funko, Hasbro, Character Options. Now. I think Funko should profit, again as I said, Funko should profit from other toy companies. Hasbro, Sanchi. Sanchi can work on the plushies, I think Hasbro can work some on the figurines, and some other companies can work on the other designs that Funko has been releasing. Now, is it, and now I think that's the best way to do things, and the profit way, and also um, so you don't get mistakes done, and they can also work on things, and a bit of researching in there, so Funko is not just this big company that's working on these entire shit list of all the FNAF merch, mostly in one go. The whole uh, thing about toys released before uh, the game is in development, or the game is finished. This reminds me 
of another situation that happened with Joel Schumacher's uh, two Batman films. Now, Joel Schumacher, when he did the Batman movies, he was allowed to make the movies, but he was forced to make them as uh, kid-friendly and uh, not as uh, darker tone as Tim Burton, even though it wasn't aimed for children in the first place. I blame the advertising and the toys and that. Anyway, I already talked about that, but the thing is, the second movie he did, Batman and Robin, he mentioned it in the interview of the making of the movie, even when he also said sorry to the fan base. Yeah, I feel bad for him still. The people that want him to make the uh, force them to do the sequel. They want it to be toyetic, as in they want the toys released before the movie comes out. And we're and like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? What the fuck are you doing? The thing is, you're not just releasing the figurines before the movie comes out, but they also they also did play sets, also toys and shit, weird designs that are nothing like in the movie, and they and sometimes the bit in the movie that to change things to have the toys look like in the movie you know it's fucking confusing so you so you and the problem is these toys are on the shelf really quick so basically if the movie the problem is if you if the movie is unsuccessful no one will buy the toys and some people did not just because of them liking the movie but some of the toys were actually pretty cool but most people didn't buy them because they didn't like because most of it because they didn't like the movie or they didn't like designs or they don't like this or that or whatever etc. Some people bought them because some because they had a really good fun with playing with them. That's about it. Some cases and sometimes they bought them because they are a fan of the movie. And but that's like um, very limited. Uh, that's very limited to nearly the entire fan base of Batman you know and it, it got to a point where the movie was known for being terrible and all this bullshit about being the director being terrible and stuff like that I don't think the, ter the director's to blame besides the trouble he's been through making these two Batman films and people shit on him for being a terrible director because of just these two films yeah I know um yeah and it's sort of, and the, the toy attic thing is sort of exactly what Funko is, it feels like what well, that's what Funko is kind of doing. Um, trying to, uh, what, what's, what's, being successful and trying to tie in with the video game in a way. You know, I know there's, I know there's a fan base that loves these two Batman movies and I know that some people don't. Some people prefer Tim Burton, some people prefer over Christopher Nolan Batman and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. I'm not hate, I'm not knocking at any of the fan bases that are like this or this or that. I'm just coming across as a statement and a sort of an example and sort of a tribute to not to not just the directors, but to uh, the troubles that our, of our Joel Schumacher had when he was when he did the Batman films and claimed as a terrible director and all this bullshit about him. And yeah, and I'm gonna move on from this. Uh, Funko and uh, the Batman situation, at, um, uh, Batman toys. Uh, it was an example, and it was just something that I want to talk about. And yeah, and I just want to respect again, once again, of Joel Schumacher that passed away. Joel Schumacher that passed away. Sorry if I pronounced his last name wrong. But I want to. But after he passed away, and when I was young, and when I first watched the Batman films, I didn't. I love him as a kid and but when I got older I started to see things differently and I still have respect in in those two films doesn't mean I will watch them again because of I'm not saying that the movies are bad or good or anything but the, with the history behind it Tim Burton and uh, Joel Schumacher and make you feel bad for those two guys yeah um, for what they had to go through to make. We moved on from all this discussion about this and that. Now we're going to talk about character options. The story behind character options. Now, where Doctor Who has begun once again and revived in 2005 with uh, Christopher Eccleston's Doctor when he played as the role of Doctor Who, which is with his song Screwdriver. That and character options went to how they got in touch with made a toy of the song Screwdriver to make him figurines and play sets here and there. 
Now, they weren't as uh, detailed, really well detailed, or really articulated, but it was a start. In fact, people wanted more good sculpts and articulation and character options listened, and then they did that, and to all the way to um, the big size figurines, they did really well with those. With David, Ten David Tennant's era, to uh, Matt Smith's era, to all the way to our, the new Doctor today. Or any time really um but unfortunately due to i don't know i don't know character options really well but i know a fact that they have uh probably have a lot of budget issues and things here and there that they can't really change molds and put, buy molds and that in fact they go into a rabbit hole so much that some of the figurines they did in the past and some of the figurines they're doing now are a little bit uh low quality than others now that's i'm not saying that character options is shit or anything I'm not saying it's a bad thing or not, and if people love uh, sonic screwdrivers or this and that, and say, oh my god, this is class, how dare you say this about that, that's fine. But I'm just going to be pointing out it's a discussion I want to be talking about in tips here and there about the sonic screwdrivers. Now these sonic screwdrivers, especially this one right now, has been going around since 2005. People like me, a long time fans, want and bought these and want them more like this make them more like the prop in the show with uh modifications now i'm going to give big credit here to vote saxon 07 the youtuber steven and his friend anthony and some other people that he knows i'm going to give a big tribute to them because they have a long good history and, and mostly they're the master on doctor who merchandise now in fact and they're not just into doctor they're into other things and a lot of people don't that it's a multiple channel based thing it's not just into doctor who they're, they're into other things such as me i'm not just into finance at freddy's or doctor who or this and that i'm into a lot of things so all i get is just mostly fans that love finance at freddy's or doctor who. i'm into other things but that's a side note, and I'm also going to put the link for both Saxon's channel in the description down below as well. Uh, tribute and respect them as a person and not what they're into. Um, they're very funny guys and stuff like that. So the main problem that the fans have been having with the Sonic Screwdriver is the button on the slider. Now, character options have always made uh, where the button should be is basically the compartment of how to unscrew the thing and get into the batteries and stuff. Now, that's not a, I'm not saying that's a bad or a good thing, but long, long time fans and the amount of re releases they have been doing this since 2005 and, and now, that they should finally uh, put a button on the side. And then again, I'm pretty sure character options doesn't have the budget and maybe doesn't have ideas and stuff like that. and. But I'm gonna give you tips here and there on how to improve these Sonics and and again character options. If you're watching this or not, I don't it, it doesn't matter, but the case here is that if you do and if you take some of these ideas that I'm gonna mention, longtime fans and people are gonna go, thank God that you have finally done these things. And finally improved these and you in a way, not you're not just you'll be making the fans pleased and very happy. But you also get a good gamble and you and a lot of people will buy these more anyway now this sonic screwdriver is the 9th slash 10th so i made it more like the knights sonic now as you can see here there's big huge modifications like the paint um i cut the uh, thing off because it, it's one of those ones that you know, just pen you take off and put it back on um i nail pull i paint this entire thing but first of all i chip i took this uh you know, I took this bit out, put the slider in, and uh, I changed the uh, wiring to make it more accurate. Changed the LED light to make it more brighter. Give cre I give credit to my dad for um, helping me on this sonic screwdriver and putting the wire in, the, the button in, and the light and stuff. I mostly took it apart, but I got the electronics. Some weird Christmas guns that blow bubbles. Yeah, some of the electronics are from this. The light as well. And so I just so I did that, and when Dad went put it all together, he tested the light on. He blinded himself how bright the light is. I'm going to show you how bright this is. This is absolutely bright. I worked on this a year ago. In fact, I even shined it up on uh, the ceiling, and it wasn't even that dark. 
it looked dark in my um, studio, but it was actually during the morning. So this was really impressive. And what's also impressive is that uh, you shine the light here. You can also see the light coming through this bit here. How the doctor reads his information from a sonic screwdriver. So you can uh, press a button and go like that if you like, but it's a bit it's a bit flimsy with the slider bit. It doesn't matter. Now you probably already noticed that there's no sound in here. Now that's one of the few things that uh, character options having a problem with the uh, microchips with the uh, thing. They've been re-releasing these. Actually, the first Sonic they ever released was this one, and the first uh, the sound effect it only has was the buzzing sound. Now I got a um, War Doctor. I'll give you a perfect example of what it sounded like. These these were the same microchips in the latest Sonics here. Now these sound effects were all in this one, and I think these sound effects were all in the other ones, except they're a bit higher pitched. Later on, because they keep releasing these and changing the microchips over time, so you get different things. Mostly, it's the same. Now. The problem is this sonic screwdriver has the exact same sound effect and same activation type mechanism so if you're pressing the button it will do this now the two the two sound effects here are maybe a, i don't know maybe they're a combination between uh this sonic screwdriver and matt smith's sonic screwdriver I don't know, but the other sound effects are um, classic era sonic screwdrivers. Now, here's the thing. I would uh, carefully change the uh, microchip and just have, but again with like this sonic having just, should be, this one should be high pitch and maybe just have as well, like this one without any of the extra sounds and then have the microchip here so if you hold if you hold the button and you press it you move it around and you'll hear the sound go up and higher now here's the thing the people that uh, like me having a problem with this sonic screwdriver here is the fact that they never put the button on the slider they always uh, that's where the um, screw compartment to take the slider out so you can change the batteries now I got a perfect idea for that. At first I was thinking of putting, turning this so you can put the batteries in. No, I think the better way of doing this is that had this had the button with the this piece all one piece. The extra bit here is a separate piece like a shell. Now you're probably wondering how you're gonna get into the bat battery compartment. Well, here's the thing. See this bit here? This bit here, like how I uh, took the uh, this, how I took the thing out. How about have this, have this whole, hold this whole little ring here on a screw, so you can unscrew it, take it out, you can take the whole thing out, and you can put replace the batteries maybe on the other side here. I'm not talking about the shell, the inside of this thing, the the slider. You can from that angle, and you'll get the sound effect covered here. And when, the, and when you progress over here, you the sound will get more loud. That is the best way to do it, character options. And uh, stick with the one sound or two. That's just only things you need to uh, uh, upgrade. Oh boy, uh, these sonic screwdrivers. Now there's a fourth uh, Tom Baker sonic screwdriver. And the other, and John Pertwee sonic screwdriver. Now they're completely different. But they have the same gimmick, I think. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. It's a bit of a mix, really. Depends on what, how, uh, which version they released of the pack. So this Sonic screwdriver is a classic, right? You hear the sound of... Um, I don't have anything wrong with this. I think everything is perfect. You can see that I painted this more. Um, it's a bit dodgy because I was 13. And I put more um, paint t a detail to the bullet. The red paint <laughs> didn't do such a good job because over time, the, the way I left it in my jacket for cosplay at, at the time, 
the paint sort of got sticky and warm and overheats. So yeah, I think the paint of the what the original Sonic screwdriver this looked like paint look a little bit improved. Like the I uh, paint the um the screw side screws side screws here like I did and just the bullet as well and I think that's about it and maybe make the paint chrome instead of uh, silver like in the movie uh, the show was a bit more um, chromey or whatever now I think the only thing you also need to improve was maybe this compartment it's up to you really character option maybe you can have the this bit here uh, twist you can pull out and you can put the batteries in here there's the second problem, the microchip. You hear these, these sound effects? Now these sound effects are from Matt Smith Sonic. You just get these sounds. And some other sounds that were from uh, Tom Baker's era. And put them in the microchip. That's it. And... There's other things you can improve with the other uh, Sonic screwdrivers or re-release like the Master Sonic or some Sonics that were in the show that I can't remember that's been around and uh, were in, or featured in the um, broadcast. Now this Matt Smith Sonic has been... The only problems I have was the features and they have fixed this with uh, later Sonic screwdrivers except the extended thing. Here and, and in the in the prop, it had no it had a type of spring that wasn't like this. It was like a delicate spring that it uh, clicked into place when it's extended. Now I don't know I don't know how character options can do this. I don't know the, how they do it. I don't know how the technique was done properly. Um, I'm not good with good with that. So I think you should just leave that alone now. Uh, the only problem I have was the button to activate the um, sound effects. The sound effects are perfect for this. Okay, here is the fault. It's not working because uh, here's the problem. Here's one of the problems. is the fact that the button, the actual button here, how they did it, is here. So if you press your button here, it will push in here and it will activate this, this uh, button here. That's one of the problems because when you when you extend it, you can't press the button no more because the button's here, and the button's even having trouble. Um, the the button's even having trouble to activate the switch. Uh, the switch anyway now. When it's extended, you're meant to do this. There's a button here, and you're meant to do this, which is not accurate. And they have fixed this with later versions with uh, the touch screen and and the other one where they have the button fixed where you can where they have I think it's an extra button here and down there I don't know how that I don't know exactly how it works but uh, so basically they fixed that with another version and they replaced something with the actual chip now here's the thing those two other Sonics those two other release Sonics that are better are very limited now this is the only Sonic that you can actually, that's actually um, sell more of, which is which is sad in a way because they upgraded the other Sonics and they're not selling them instead of selling the the ones that are a little bit cheaper and less sophisticated and fixed with the other ones, and that's kind of the same thing. River Sonic Screwdriver and the first version of River Sonic was so good. In fact, it had all the details. It had all these effects and that and maybe there was some hiccups here and there that could have added in but they didn't but they did a re-release of that and and they did fix it and stuff and they keep and they really released it again i don't know if it was like a joke or whatever but the thing is this took some of the electric uh, electronics out of it and it only stated it to a blue and people had a problem with that and guess what they did they changed it to a red setting so that in a way they're not really paying attention what miss about the River Sonic Screwdriver. In fact, the River Sonic Screwdriver, the first wave, was so good because it had all these things like in the prop, even though it was a little bit plastic paint. But then you can't, that, that can't, that's not the problem. The problem was 
the fact that they put less special effects, uh, less animatronics and stuff like that, I think it's because of the budget and because of the strains they can have with electronics and stuff like that. With another Sonic Screwdriver this, except it's all hollow and without the features, it's much more cheaper really and they do and for some reason they sell that for a lot of money. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Oh, I also going to mention another one. Now there is one that hasn't been done right, the 8th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver in the, uh, the mini TV movie. His Sonic wasn't really portrayed well with a toy here. Now it looks really good, but it's, there's two things wrong with it. One, it's a little bit bulky here and there, but that's, that's, that's basically with the toys. And two is that the features are very less like what it does in the movie. It's this really, it's a bit like this one here, except the, uh, this is different except, and the bullet is different and except it of having a spring, the thing was, a, the, 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 uh, the, the collar piece was a little bit down, locked into here and there was a button that he pressed and it flinked open sort of like an extended mode thing and uh, yeah. And then they had the sound effects later for um, going to buzzy sounds. Now here's a here's an ex here's a here's a tip if you, if you want to have this same mechanic with the spring like that with a button that has that's that's in the style of this with the spring here. So you go like like that when you press the button, it will flip sort of like the neuralizer from Men in Black. And now you could have another button. One button that has the spring um, activation, and the other one for the sound effect, and that's just a really simple. Uh, that's just that's really that's it. That's really all you need for the eighth doctor. Just the shell, sort of like this one, but upgrade it to make it more like the eighth doctor and change the bullet here. Make the spring have a contraption where. You, where it's down, a little bit down, or just this bit here, where it's a bit down here, and you press the button, it will flick open, sort of like the uh, the eleventh Doctor slash twelfth, and you press the other button, it'll do the sound effects. That's all you need to do, and I'm not saying that character options can do this because, um, due to budget, I can, I know that uh, character options has a has a little um, due to budget. I'm pretty sure they wouldn't do really do this but as an idea and a lot of things that can change and it'll make the fans happy and I know that some fans are happy the way they are but other fans like me and longtime fans and fans have been rebuying these all the time trying to get better versions would understand what I'm going across at and yeah that's it that's all I need to say character option but I wanted to get this video done I had other video. I had um, two other videos planned before this one. The other videos were plan. The plan was uh, me discussing about my movies that I've been working on for years and shit. I decided to work on this one because it's a lot quicker. Unfortunately, I had to redo this video again because I was talking like this all the time and I was really, really, really slow. Ooh, so, <laughs> so yeah. I'm redoing this video and it's a bit more quicker now because I know what to say, what not to say right now. So and I also did a little bit of information about Funko and their toys and their problems that they can fix. And just the merchandise of Doctor Who and the character of and the company of character options and just stuff like that really. Just things to talk about, not majorly get uh, attached to what I say. Stuff like that, you know. Anyway. I have enough talking about this video. In fact, this video took longer than it should have been. And I had to cut some bits out in here and there because I was just making this video way too long. In fact, I don't, I'm pretty sure this video is not gonna get a lot of attention for, to what I have to say, probably will, maybe not. I don't know how things go. And most of my videos don't get attention here and there. I don't care about getting uh, views or subscribers. I care about what I, what I love making videos and movies and stuff like that. I love making things and I love to share you share some things about what I love to other people that can also get inspiration or just watch them just for the hell of it. 
and in fact I am fixing and I'm thinking of going back to my older videos and fixing them or going back to some of my movies that I'm refixing because I had problems with them, major big problems with them. As a, but that's that's a that's the part of having that's part of filmmaking. Some things you gotta let go and some things you need to improve, some you know, just things anyway. Also, when this video is finished, I'm going to spend time cleaning my room such that my parents have been bugging me for a long time. Finally, rest my mind off of this whole entire subject and something that I really want to get over with. Before this news becomes bits here and that of what I mentioned before gets a little bit outdated. In fact, it kind of already is now because some of these things I have discussed are not relevant anymore because, you know, due to the freaking problem of having, so yeah. Alright, I finally finished this video. Now, what did I discuss? Oh yeah, I talked about Joel Schumacher, uh, the director that passed away, and a bit of a, some extra subjects about, in general, about filmmaking, and etc. And the shit that uh, people can go through by the news and, you know, or people in general on the internet. Parts of me discussing about this. Now, I don't have a big grudge about any of this topics. Now, in fact, after when I finish this video, I'm gonna move on from talking about this because I'm, I'll, I, can, I can tell you that I'm gonna get a lot of people talking about uh, get, over it, get over it or you shouldn't be here on the internet or this and that or whatever bullshit reasons and stuff that people might think about this video. Again, this was just my brief video about discussing subjects to do with this and that. And my uh, anger with this and other people as well. But I'm not lingering or I'm going to keep talking or I'm going to keep it to this or that or whatever. In fact, when this video is finished, I'm going to be doing some different videos that doesn't have to revolve around that subject. Thing is, life is like that. Best thing is to move on from it and uh, do something different. Yes, you can. Uh, some people can stick around in the past and that, but it doesn't mean this was just a quick video that I want to get over with. This took even longer than it should, and discussing about my movies that I've been working on my almost my entire life so far because I'm 18 now but I probably will be still working on these films that I've been in made when I'm 20 or older you know even older those videos are gonna be separate and it's gonna be in its own series and I'll be discussing all about this and that and the making of this and that and uh, reasons I haven't uploaded or finished making them yet uh, in fact that, that's what I, I just want to make more videos like this to let you know and give you some history about me that you probably didn't know or what I'm like. A fast recap of what I said and did. I talked about Joel Schumacher, the legendary director that sadly passed away this year and some other actors in 2020, especially now while I'm talking, some other people that also also passed away by the time I was, I was still working on this video. So I did end my little hiccups in uh, brief little argument about this and that about you know the news and shit but that's i'm done talking about that and moving on to other things i also discussed about funko and the bullshit that went around with it including uh extra stuff that i completely forgot because i'm just want to finish this video and i had enough talking about this discussion and enough talking about this and working on this video because this was meant to be uploaded six weeks ago but it took me longer due to my editing software, a bit stupid lately. And the fact is I had other things during that time and I had to be going some places. Just a lot of shit really on my mind. Now I've got a massive headache and I'm going to be start drinking water and this and that. And I just want to end this video here. And remember, I'll see you in the future. Bye.